Okay, we have another problem that has a some, an angle inside that's not just a single angle, so these have a special process, and this time we do have an interval. Now, for these problems, whether or not they give you an interval or, uh, included, you have to do the same process. So we're going to get, because we're talking about radians, I'm going to use the, the k value here, the 2 pi k. I'm going to have that on this question. So that 2 pi k or the 360 k, depending on what uh, unit of measurement you want to have your answers in, you have to do that for this kind of problem, whether or not an interval is given. So we did a previous example where we did one without an interval. We're going to do exactly the same setup here, except that we just have one more thing we have to do to complete and get the actual answers between 0 and 2 pi. The first thing we want to do is we want to look at our table and see what angle gives us a value of square root of 3 over 2. We're going to pretend that this is regular theta. So on my table, I go down on the sine column, and I go down to square root of 3 over 2, and that gives us a reference angle of, we're going to use uh, radians here, so we're going to use pi over 3, because we've got to be between 0 and 2 pi. So pi over 3, uh, we, need, we need to draw those angles on the uh, unit circle. So we need to look at what quadrants is sine uh, negative in. Now sine can be uh, thought of as a y value. So if I look at this unit circle, I want to see what quadrants would my y values both be negative in. And that would actually be these two quadrants here, quadrant 3 and quadrant number 4 both of them would have negative y values because all this is below the x-axis. So in fact, if I draw the lines in right here, that right there would be my lines drawn in. Pi over 3 is the same thing as 60. I'm, I will go ahead and label these in radians here, again because the whole problem originally was given in terms of radians. So pi over 3 here and pi over 3 there. So if I want to get the actual values uh, what the angle values will be because I want to write my answers in terms of uh, radians here. Let's think about how we would do that. First of all, this is pi going over to here and I'm taking pi and I'm adding a pi over 3 to it. So when I do that, I have a 1 pi and a 1 third. That will give me 4 thirds pi. So one of my first answers will be uh, 4 pi over 3. Now I want to add a 2 pi k to this because again, um, 2 pi k here, if I can write the right, help if I write the right variable. So 2 pi k is what I want here. And I'm doing that, again, because this process here, if you have a 2, if you have a, another number here that's not a 1, then you always want to actually put a k value on your answer. That's the process. Okay, so we got that. Now, let's do this one over here. This is 2 pi, and I have to subtract a pi over 3 from it. So if I do 2 pi minus pi over 3, that's going to give us 5 pi over 3. So that's the next one, 5 pi over 3. Once again, I want to add a 2 pi k to my answer. I'm going to have both of these set equal to 2 theta because remember, we're solving for theta, not for 2 theta. So we did all this as if the problem would be theta. However, I want to make it, have it equal to 2 theta. So I have this. I have 2 theta equals both of those. So we're basically done with the unit circle. We don't need to do that anymore. We found our answers. What do you want to do next? Is you want to solve for theta. That involves multiplying the entire equation by a half. So if I want to get theta, what will happen is I'm essentially going to multiply everything here by a half because that will allow me to get theta by itself because 1 half times 2 theta just gives us theta. So I'm going to put a 1 half next to each of these just to show you visually what's happening here. And so for this I get theta is going to equal uh, the 4 and 2 reduce. I get 2 pi over 3 plus pi k. That's what I'm going to get uh, as my first equation here. Now the second one I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a 1 half next to each thing because that's really what I'm doing multiplying through by 1 half. And what I get is I get theta is equal to uh, 5 pi over 6 and then plus pi k. So here is my two different solutions that I have. So now that I have that, let me show you now what you need to do to finish this problem out. Once we have these two, we're gonna do, we have one equation here. This is my 2 pi over 3 plus pi k. And then I have theta is equal to 5 pi over 6 plus pi k. What we have to do is we're going to start my k out at 0 
and I'm gonna keep on going until I get a value that's no longer on here, because these are our general solutions, but we wanna find the exact solutions. The exact solutions involve plugging in numbers for k, and that's gonna generate angles that will be between zero and two pi. Now, I didn't have to do this on the previous example when there was no interval given, because if there's no interval given, then my answers are just gonna be in the general form. But now that they actually want an interval here, that's why we still need the pi k there as part of my answer. That's why I still set it up originally with the two pi k there. So now that I have this, I'm gonna put in my, uh, my values uh, for k. So first of all, you always start k out at zero no matter what. And you keep on going until you get a value that's, that's bigger than the interval. If you get a value that's bigger, then we know we're gonna stop. Okay, so first we have k is equal to zero. What I would do is theta is an equal, I'm gonna put in uh, zero for k, okay, and I get that. Theta is equal to two pi over three. That's my first answer. Now I can do exactly the same thing over here. I'll put a zero in this equation, and I'll get theta is equal to five pi over six plus pi times zero. And again, my theta is equal to, I get an answer there. Two pi over three and five pi over six, both of those would fit my interval from zero to two pi. Next, let's let k uh, equal one. So if k equals one, I get theta equals two pi over three plus pi times one, which is just gonna be pi. Now I wanna add that together with some common denominators, multiply that by three over three, and I'll get five pi over three. That is another answer also that's between uh, zero and two pi. So that would be a, another solution I would have. So, so far I have three solutions I've found. I'll put one in, in this equation, theta equals five pi over six plus pi times one. Again, I put one in for k. Again, you don't have to show that. So I have five pi over six plus pi. Again, I'm gonna get common denominators on that. I get 11 pi over six because I can multiply top and bottom by six over six. So, so far, here are my four solutions that I have. Now, what happens if I put k equals two in here? Well, let's take a look at this. Here's my equation that I have. If I put a two in here for k, that means I get two pi over three plus two pi. Well, that's already gonna be a number that's outside of my interval, so therefore I know that I would have to stop there. So once I get a number that's no longer my interval, then I don't need to use that k value anymore. So I know that I only wanna use two values for k here, and that's gonna give me my solutions. Another way you can tell how many k values to use is you actually look at the number here in front of the theta. The number in front of the theta will tell you how many k values that you have to use. So since I see a two there in front of theta, that tells me I wanna find two values only for k, which I did. I found k equals zero and k equals one. The reasoning behind that is because uh, in, that, in that case, again, if I went one more, one more k value, I would get a value that's no longer on here. So that's a shortcut way of doing it. Just looking at that number, I'll tell you how many k values that you have to use. So therefore, these circle answers, those are your four exact solutions for this particular problem.